things that we take for granted. You are dressed the way you are dressed for a reason. We have progressively become casual. I have seen ministers who are dressed like they are going to milk cows. For the speaker to continue dressing the way she is dressed every day, and that tells you the mental frame of some of our colleagues, Madam Speaker. But you are the one who has been lenient. When we raise this matter, you, you find a way of defending them. You can look at them. I don't have to say names today. No, you say the names. Someone enters parliament as if he's going to milk cows. Say the names. Like uh, the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, who was saying order before I even mentioned his name. <laughs> <clears throat> Madam, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> Madam Speaker. The, the, the casual way that people dress, people attend to parliament, is the reason on Tuesday we had two ministers who brought fake statements and they all asked to take them back. I am speaking about the casual way. Because it is not just a matter of ministers bringing their bodies in parliament. They must add value. Thank this you. one who has been celebrating that all of us are here. You wait when they begin answering. Then you will know that they are actually useless. Because there is, it, there is nothing useless. You are responding in anticipation because they have not. Uh -uh, I am speaking. Uh, they have not started responding to anything. Now you are speaking on anticipation. Honorable members. Honorable members. The honorable Frank that you are talking about. It's just unfortunate that not all of us can afford the Mandela shirt. That's a Mandela shirt. Sarah wants, Sarah wants Frank to, to hang himself. Huh? I know Sarah is used to buttoning. If Sarah wants to come and but next item. Matter, honorable members, item. please. I, item three, urgent questions by members. First you want to rule 49. Speaker. And thank you for that uh, compliment that I'm one of your good ministers. I pledge to be, to continue being. I request, right honorable, that uh, you could convene us for a meeting with the Minister of Finance and we discuss how to go about it. Thank you. I, I, I have a Prime Minister here, Honorable Prime Minister. Right honorable. Speaker, I thank you for your motherly for your motherly kindness. One, I all apologize on behalf of the ministers for not being around yesterday. Many of them had come in a bit late after two, though they were intending to come. I'm going to, I want to request you to continue working with ministers and they are also committed to continue working with you. And I pledge that we shall improve on the timekeeping so that they are always here on time. I thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable members, I have not finished my communication, but I want to thank you for your apology. And uh, for me, I will always work with the ministers, but you have no choice. You have to work with me. You have no choice, you have to work with me within these five years. So for me, I'm open, we'll work together. It's not about an Anita. It's not about me. It's about the people of this country. It's about these members who wait all the time come here and there's nobody to respond to what they're raising. It's not about me as a person. 
I have nothing personal with anybody. And whoever thinks that I have anything personal. Honorable members, at the end of today's sitting, we'll go on recess until 28th September. Unlike other recess, other recess periods, where some committees will continue to transact, this recess will be an absolute one. I expect you to head to your constituencies to monitor and implement government programs. Because we are also tired of saying members are not in the house, now we have opponents like what was raised the other day. So now I want you to go and work with those opponents and make sure you protect your constituency. Nobody should tell, me, uh, tell the voters that, you know, we had committee. No, you go and work. And uh, the, the voters outside there, your members are coming home. Yes, um, once again, I want to thank you for coming. And we have a very congested order paper. There's a procedural matter here. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for your communication and for taking us on, especially for our absence in the House. Right Honorable Speaker, I was uh, perturbed, particularly when you mentioned that some ministers are saying that they don't feel comfortable attending this parliament because of the presiding officers. And uh, it leaves us wondering whether the ministers are serving the presiding officers or are serving the country and responding to the issues that we raise here. And I understand even most of the ministers are members of parliament. So if that allegation keeps on lingering around, should we assume that the ministers are not in tandem with what the presiding officers are doing? Or, and if it is like that, can the Prime Minister call upon the ministers and find out who are those specific, because we shall assume that it's all the front bench that is undermining the, preside, uh, the presiding officers. Thank you. Uh, that is not anything for discussion on whether you want to come inside because you like Anita or Thomas. No, that's not anything for discussion, but you must take note as ministers. We are still here for five years. Yes? I want to thank you for your communication. And particularly, right honorable speaker, the procedure matter I want to raise, I want to thank the prime minister for coming to apologize. But right honorable speaker. And by the way, the right honorable Nabanja this morning called me equally apologizing. And I want to thank her also for apologizing. Right Honourable Speaker, the procedure matter I want to raise. This is not the first time the Honourable Nakadama is coming to apologize here when we don't have ministers in the House. Right Honourable Speaker, I'm on record of raising the issue of ministers, not once, not twice, not 20 times. Right Honourable Speaker, I want it to be on record today, and since the Prime Minister is here, right, we need to be procedurally right for it to be on record that the Prime Minister commits that what happened yesterday will never happen again. Because they come and casually apologize, then after apologizing, the same thing happens tomorrow. So my procedure matter is, we need to be procedurally right for her to come here to commit and commit government and commit their office that this will never happen again in the 11th parliament. That is what I wanted to move. On Honorable members, what honorable member is raising is a very pertinent issue. We need a commitment from government. Yes? Right, Honorable. Uh, on my part, I'm actually very happy that you are asserting our authority on our behalf. That's number one. Number two, I am seeking your guidance as to whether the minister is instructed to appear in parliament will include the Minister of Education who has been uh, adjudged to be proceeding with us on Zoom, 
or whether these other ministers are also are free, like her, to, up, to attend and appear on Zoom. Let's first get a commitment from the Prime Minister. Right, Honorable Speaker. You know, the religion I believe in That is a religion I believe in. People do wrong and they seek for forgiveness. Then the following day, they do another wrong and they seek for forgiveness. And God is always forgiving them. That is our creator. When I commit that honorable ministers will do better, I believe that honorable members who are ministers will continue improving every day. I thank you. Honorable members, on the issue of what honorable, honorable second has raised, that is under Rule 114 attendance of sittings by ministers, for, for any ministry, the minister or at least the Minister of State shall attend the sitting of the House. And where none of them is able to attend, the Minister shall request another Minister to represent that Minister's interest in the House and notify the Speaker. I was notified by the First Lady that she would be sending Honorable Guang, who is also here, should be saying, Honorable Guang, are you not representing the First Lady? Honorable Mwingo, Honorable Mwingo is also there. Yeah. So, I, I, so they, I got a letter. <laughs> Zijan, Zijan, you are not a minister. You are not a minister. Uh -uh. Let's have decorum, respect for the house, okay? Uh -uh. You're making it as a procedure matter on what? Come on. I, I, I got a letter from, from the minister sending the two, and I'm okay with it as a presiding officer. Thank you. Since we have the Honorable Minister for Agriculture here, let him come and inform us about the seeds issue. Right Honorable Speaker, I presented a substantive statement here, pointing out that the Minister of Agriculture no longer gives out seeds. We have zero budget for that. The policy changed to PDM. However, we have had exceptional circumstances where this House has intervened and the Minister of Finance accepted and made supplementary provisions. So that's why I was saying if I cannot make a commitment without the involvement of the Minister of Finance, as long as the Minister of Finance makes a provision, you just hold on right on our allow, doctor. As long as we have a provision, the accounting office of any entity under the commitment control system cannot commit funds they do not have in their budget. So unless we get that commitment that some funds will be released, we will be able to instruct all the, the input dealers who have been in this system to give the seeds to members of parliament. So I beg that we have a dialogue with the speaker representing parliament and the minister of finance, and we find a solution. But as of now, I am non committal. Information, information. We need only 4 billion shillings to ensure that all the constituencies in this country, they get seeds. When we do that, we would have secured this country in terms of food 
for the next season. Right, Honorable Speaker, through you, you have always paid attention to the issues that are so crucial for the people of Uganda. We, we ask right. you, Right Honorable Speaker, to prevail. Minister of Finance should find 4 billion shillings only. I thank you so right much. Right Honorable Speaker, as mm -hmm. they labor to, to Minister of Finance to find the uh, resources to give our people seeds, Right Honorable Speaker, across a good number of our people in Uganda are fishermen. We have the fishing communities that in most cases are not supported. There are those who are doing um, aquaculture, they are not given fingerlings, they are those, they are burning boats, they are burning nets, but they are not supporting them with fishing tools. They should be as well considered, right, Honorable Speaker. I see the I minister think. excited. Minister, come to the floor. Honorable Minister. But procedure, uh -uh. Madam. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Honorable Minister, assure us that you are going to give. Thank you, uh, right, Honorable Speaker. My boss is around, but uh, since you have given me the opportunity, just as uh, the Honorable Minister said, it's so urgent for us to sit with the Minister of Finance and ensure that us Honorable Members go back to their communities. It would be healthy to go with both the the seeds for crop, the seeds for uh, uh, the fingerlings, and also for, for animals. It's very important to go to our communities and see that our people are, are, are given the chicks, the fingerlings, the different... Uh, so for me, I am ready to move around and support the the Honorable Members of Parliament, when given uh, the opportunity, especially financially. Thank you. Thank you. Right Honorable Speaker, I'm going to call Minister of Finance. Together with the Minister of Agriculture, we meet tomorrow, and we shall come back here with the feedback. Honorable Members. No, no procedure, Madam. Procedure, Madam. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Yes, procedure. Madam Speaker. You have just guided this house earlier that we are actually proceeding on recess today. When the Prime Minister, and I will not call her Deputy Prime Minister because of where she's seated today. When the Prime Minister says, and we come back, and we on recess up to 28th, you know, this is how this government has been, uh, has been uh, <laughs> playing games. That's point number one. The second procedure issue, Madam Speaker, is uh, about how we run government. Those of us that have been around and run know, and that this is how government is run, and I mean governments of civilized men and women. The minister responsible raises a budget and he presents it to the ministry responsible for finance. Now, we are deceiving ourselves here by saying, where is the money, when we did not put it in the budget. Either the reason we did not put it in the budget is that the Minister of Agriculture did not present it to finance, or we rejected it by ourselves. The second option is that maybe we do not have a Prime Minister, because you do not coordinate cabinet from here. What they are displaying here is a show that actually they do not know what they are doing. Borrowing the words of the late Honorable Jacob Olanya, right Honorable Speaker, seated where you're seated, and she would turn like you've turned it to look at the person <laughs> speaking. She, he used to say that you have ministers running around like headless chicken. Because I'm not a speaker, because I'm not a speaker, I will not repeat the same words. May I request that you procedurally guide the Prime Minister to coordinate cabinet from elsewhere and just give, uh, present to us what they are meant to present to us. Honorable, yes. Uh. Thank you, Right Honorable uh, Speaker. I like honesty because my name is Frank. It's not that we are really clueless about what is required. Government follows policy. 
we govern by policy. You may reach a point and say, this policy is not working, let's change it. Government reached a point and said that the distribution of seedlings was counterproductive. That the people who were involved in distributing were distributing to themselves. That they were even distributing seedlings out of planting time. So the executive took a decision that let money go through PDM and people buy for themselves. But repeatedly on this house, members continue to, to bring out an argument that giving seedlings directly is still very relevant, isn't it? And I seem to agree with that proposition. So from our side, we can, I cannot decide here. We have to get back to the position of the executive and see how we can reform the policy from the input of your submissions. That's why I'm, I'm requesting the right honorable speaker to coordinate with us. She could even have a meeting with us and give us the position. And we would be able to move together. Honorable Minister, if that was a policy that was made by, uh, by cabinet, we will not change the policy here. But the fact remains that we want seats. For us, we want seats. We are not changing the policy. But the, the fact that we are able to rescue other people outside there, let's now rescue the whole country by giving them seats. So I would love to be part of that meeting tomorrow. Let's have a meeting in my office at 11, not actually 11, at 2. Let's have a meeting, and then we will communicate to the members. Yes, uh, Thank you. I rise on two clarification points. One, the Prime Minister presides over is the supervisor of the Minister of Agriculture. The policy has changed. Now, in the PDM, we give money to people. However, not all the people receive money. What about, those, uh, what about those within the 39 who have not received seeds. No, outside the, second, the 39. Sorry, yes. 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 Uh, the second issue, the second issue I rise on is uh, the Minister of Agriculture has talked about change in policy, which is correct. However, uh, as I have already noted, I will raise it in a a matter of national importance, so that... Uh, yes, yes uh, uh, thank you. Yes, Madam Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want really this to go on record, because we elected you overwhelmingly. And even these ministers elected you. I do not see why some of the ministers can even imagine in their heads that while you are presiding in that seat, they cannot step here. That is uh, unacceptable. And for us, much as we, you should know, this, we have the powers. The parliament is an independent organ with its powers. And our duty is to check the executive. So we have to check you. Whether you like it or not, that is our mandate. I do not want to come here and sit and begin imagining that I have to be at the mercy of a minister. This really would be giving away the power that the people gave me from Fort Porto, in this Thank house. So you. a minister has to be put to order, and from today, we don't want to hear anything like the speaker coming here and complaining about ministers. Ministers must go and check themselves, and if not, we are going to deal with you in the committees. We won't pass your ministerial statements. We will even block the budget. We have all this power. So we don't want this uh, business of ministers really undermining our speaker. Honorable members, honorable members, my, what I said, some of the ministers may say, I'm not going to the house because I don't like the presiding officer. Not particularly Anita or not particularly Thomas. They may have that perception that I don't like a presiding officer. 
And as I've said, that is upon you. Who feels that you don't like a presiding officer? We are still here for some good time. <laughs> My next item. item. Okay, Lop. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Without being mistaken for regurgitating matters already debated by members, in the Eighth Parliament, there was a motion to separate the role of ministers and the members of parliament. Um, unfortunately, it was lost. I believe uh, the goings on are offering potent education on the nature of conflict that arises when um, ministers play a dual role of being members of parliament and the cabinet ministers. In other jurisdictions, even within the region, that problem has been solved. And I think uh, parliaments are working better. Right on the speaker, today is the 27th sitting of the first meeting of the third session. In this document here, I have catalogued 50 issues for which Parliament gave instruction to ministers and none of them was responded to in the second session. This is the third session. If I had sought your leave, I would have laid this catalogue out of matters for which Parliament offered instruction, the Speaker ordered no response from the front bench. And we have a Prime Minister and the ministers are around. And somehow it has become their culture that you see, Parliament will forget. Unfortunately, me, I don't forget. I have the catalog and the dates, and the members raise these issues and the instructions given on matters ranging on human rights, on finance, on the environment, on health. No statement, no response, nothing. And right on the speaker, the ministers come around, peep in, and know we shall forget. I don't know what they believe. So, as a speaker, I find it a bit, you know, disturbing that we go into a third session when matters from the second session we are not attended to, and we allow ministers to proceed on the floor. Right now, speaker, I want to suggest to you, with your intelligence, that now that we are going into recess, no minister with a pending statement will be allowed on the floor of parliament unless they have cleared their backlog with the parliament. Because then we are doing a ritual here. If the minister has a matter as far as 2022 and not presented upon, and members continue on the same issues using different languages, but over the same matter, why should we allow the minister back without resolving backlog over unanswered questions? I don't know, speaker. And with your permission, I will share this document to your office. And if you allow me, when Parliament resumes, I will read out this backlog of unanswered questions from all sectors. And the ministers continue coming around, appearing very serious. Because these members are returning to their constituencies to answer to issues ministers fail to answer upon. I don't know, Speaker. But I leave it upon the presiding officer to choose the cause of action upon which this could be acted upon. Uh, uh, I thank uh, you. Uh, Honorable Lord, could you lay that on the table so that I'll be able to forward it to, to the respective ministers to bring a written response? Yes, Mr. Right, Speaker, because your order I would lay on the table. Lay it on the table. Yeah, because these ministers have this information, but Please they are mostly reluctant to act do. upon their duty. That's why you are in opposition. Let me speak. I will lay this list of shame uh, from the uh, ministers. Is it, is it entitled uh, uh, shame? <laughs> <laughs> How can you lay shame? Let me speak. I then lay, lay a, document. a document entitled Consolidated Plenary Follow Up Issues from the second session, not acted upon as of August 2023.
I Thank you. Please. please lay or forward it to the Prime Minister. Yes. With that uh, document, but one, some issues are solved and we don't come back here to Parliament, some. Secondly, there are issues that are supposed to be put on the order paper and these ministers, they are not in charge of the order paper. So I request that's, that... That's uh, not correct. Yeah, I request. We have had issues, we have had an issue in education of regulation, no, it, is, it has not been responded. We have, had, we have had a number of issues which are not responded. Don't even, don't even defend yourself. Just get the document and, and work, work on it. Right, Honorable Speaker, that's why I was saying some, but I thank him. No, no, no. We, shall, get we are going to document. respond on those issues if given opportunity. I thank you. Oh, oh, you had something? Yes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. After the Prime Minister's uh, intervention, I wanted to, to interrupt within our rules the leader of opposition. When you look at the front bench, Right Honorable Speaker, there is no single minister who is despising or undermining you. We are all here, some are overflowed this other side. Right, Honorable Speaker, when we come here and we hear about list of shame, how things we are not. No, I, that was the shame was, was withdrawn. Yeah, when the lead of opposition was speaking, actually behind him, there were empty seats. There, there, the, the focus should be we want to give services, legislative services to this country, right, Honorable Speaker? The call to attend this house should be dwarfed. And so that when we come here, we add value to the debate so that we can move forward this country. It should not be one side, and my good friend here from Masaka, we need to work together so that we can add value. It's not Hon one side. Honorable O. Oh, oh. Look. Honorable O. Oh, oh. Much as we are saying it is not one side, I want to give you an example of yesterday. We had very important motions in the House. We had very important. <laughs> oh, oh. We had very important issues. We came to the House here. And uh, that has been resolved. I don't want to open it up. We had very important issues. But one side was not there. The front bench, not even, not even the, the, the Honorable Bahati, who is always the first one in the house, not even him for the first time. And uh, I, was, I, I was even able to call Bahati and say, are you sick today? I had to ask because it was unusual. So all of us are important. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. For the Minister of Defense, Right Honorable, we wrote to you and the Prime Minister, we are three ministers, today we are all here. Honorable Sempija is supposed to attend on Tuesday, Honorable Huda attends on Wednesday, and both attend on Thursday. Today we all came to, to show that uh, this There's house is an order important. from Tororo. That, there's an order from Tororo. That, that, that order... <laughs> Honorable... Thank you. <laughs> ...who reside along the railway line in Udumba sub-county and Usolwe rural sub-counties in Butaledia district. Around the railway line? Along the railway line. What are Madam they Speaker, <laughs> Government of Uganda, through Uganda Railway Corporation, engaged MS China Road and Bridge Corporation. Honorable members, honorable members, let's listen. Because at the end of the day, we'll need to know who is an intruder. Yes? Madam Speaker, Government of Uganda through Uganda Railways Corporation 
engaged MS China Road and Bridge Corporation to undertake rehabilitation works for the Truro Nama Verere line, which passes through my constituency. Madam Speaker, the SAIDI company employed the security personnel that include uh, the UPDF to take care of their construction materials, but to the contrary, the security personnel have instead resorted to arresting whoever crosses or moves near the railway line, including arresting their animals such as cows, goats, etc., which are grazed in people's land near the railway line. Madam Speaker, to make matters worse, those that are arrested are taken to Usembatia Police Station, a distance of, of over 60 kilometers uh, from my constituency. And as a result, many of these people have lost their animals, what? and many of them pay a lot of money wherever they are taken there. Okay. Madam Speaker, people cross through gazetted roads. We had an incident last week where one person was crossing from Ubaria to go to Musavi, and he was uh, arrested by the security personnel, and they tortured him seriously. Okay. Madam Speaker, this issue has been happening for a long time, and my prayers, I want the, the, the concerned ministry, that mini, that's Minister of Security, to visit the area, assess the ground, and also want these arrests to be stopped. And okay. people who paid their money if possible, let their money be paid back, because I have a list of very many who have been paying money to the police to either release their animals or to get police bond to be, uh, to, to be released. Honorable Matiwa belongs to who? Madam Speaker, the land is for the people. But what happens, the land that, where these people are being arrested from are uh, people's land. But what happens, is, Madam Speaker, is that uh, people gave really land. And you find that, uh, so that Madam is, Speaker, that where is, the railway really line crosses. Listen, that is the land that was given by the people to the railway, to URC. But now when they are cultivating their land next to that one, they come and arrest them. But for, like for last week, the person who was arrested who was crossing the railway on a gazetted road. This is a road which runs from Busolwe going to Busabi sub-county. But they, what they, happened is this they, you security can't, person... You can't is, have a gazetted road across the, the, the railway. Madam Speaker, this is a gazetted road that we all use. Honorable Minister of Works. Uh, first, I would request the Honorable Member of Parliament to give me the particulars of that particular person, and I will look at that matter in its own merit. But uh, suffice to say that there is no grazing land along the railway line. So you cannot say you are protecting your people to graze on the railway line. There is even no grass. What are they grazing there? What they graze there is the, my, the railway materials. They come there and vandalize them under disguise of grazing. So I'll, ta I'll take the, that particular issue for the person who was arrested. But you remember, right honorable speaker, here on this floor, parliament directed that everybody, all those people who are violating and encroaching on the level land must relieve. And that's uh, my position. There is also no, no farming land around the railway. Uh, Honourable Minister, Honourable Minister, do we have farming land around the railway line? None at all, my uh, right honourable speaker. Thank you. But, but give the particulars to the Honourable Minister. Uh, Christine of Chiriandongo District, the Minister then of Local Government, Honorable Kano Tombo Time, visited the uh, Bioyali Market and Chiriandongo Market respectively, uh, because these are mud and water markets, but they belong to local government. So he promised the women that uh, government would take over, local government would take over that market, develop it into a better and respect, a respectful market. Unfortunately, eight years down the road, uh, the Minister of Local Government has uh, done nothing to the market and our women. When it rains, it's really a problem. My prayer, 
the local government minister to visit uh, these markets and give assurance to our mothers that government will work or construct these markets. Because if you see what our women go through, it's really uh, saddening. Then finally, every year, Kiriandongo local government subjects these women into yearly, or yearly bidding for, to manage the market. And it's a tedious process and promotes corruption as well. So I also pray to the minister to supervise and allow these women to sign a memorandum with the Kiriandongo local government so that they, market, they manage this market for some, a period of, of three or four years Thank in you. order to, uh, to move on. Thank you, Honorable Minister. For raising this important issue. The markets are important for our people, for sale of their commodities, and also for us local governments, they raise some bit of revenue. I will send a technical team to visit Kiri and Dongo so that we see action that can be taken on these markets. I thank you. And, and right back to the, minister, to the member, giving him a response. Sure. Thank you. I will do that right on the And kindly give me a copy. Madam gives guidelines across the country. Otherwise, if it is going to be applied you know, in a haphazard manner. Every member of parliament must come here and uh, do this. And this is what I said earlier. That's not how people run government. There must be a policy across the country. To what has been raised. If you had raised an issue that in Kasiru, Kasiru, they call it where? No, he, he's not here, but it is Kasiro. <laughs> in Busiro? <laughs> That is a, a need for a market. But uh, what Honorable Segona is raising is important for you. You need to do it across the whole country and assess where we need a market, a good market like the one we have in Soroti. You make that assessment and see what you can do in different areas. It would, it would help you. It would also help us in the next budgeting process. Um, I fully agree. Indeed, if there was a question on the policy of government on markets, I would respond to that. But specifically on markets, members will have heard we are constructing markets in a number of the big towns, the municipalities and cities, with the support of the Africa Development Bank. But I take your guidance, Speaker, on looking at the entire framework of markets in the country. Remember, with the support of Honorable Margaret Ruabashesia, we now have a new market slow, and it's that one that we're trying to see how to implement it. We thank her for that. We'll take your guidance right on our speaker. Honorable Minister, when we pass the Market Act, bill now an act, have you made a regulation for us to operationalize it? Because it has those aspects that have been raised. Right on our speaker, the market was assented to on the 22nd of May this year. We have started uh, with some pilots because we are talking of different types of markets. In Kasese, at where we are looking at a cattle market. In Kabare, we are looking at a market with established stalls uh, where vendors are already uh, in the stalls. Then we, in, Mac in Masaka, we are looking at a market fully constructed, but we are trying to operate the law, looking at how to reset all the vendors. So I expect in the next two months, we should be able to come up with the regulations that take into account the various pilots we have looked at. We shall do that, right, Honorable Speaker. We have a problem in this house. We've passed so many bills, and we are very proud that we have passed bills, but the regulations to operationalize it are not there completely. We'll, we'll wait for, for the regulations. But people will continue raising these matters, and yet we have failed to get the regulations. Honorable. 5 plus 39, Atika Yanja, uh, 52.7 hectares in Nyanga Ya Division, Masindi Municipality, Masindi District. Uh, in this land question, 
the, uh, the land in question was uh, in the 1990s offered by the local communities to NTC Masindi, former NTC Masindi, which had hitherto uh, operated on church land. Uh, the land was uh, given for educational purposes, and in 2001, a land title was issued in the names of the Board of Governors for National Teachers College Masindi. And when this college was phased out by the Minister of Education and Sports in 2005, they said the land was one of the assets that were passed to Kamara's Teachers College in Masindi. The title was handed to the Minister of Education and Sports for formal transfer to the Board of Governors of Kamara's PTC Masindi. In the process, uh, ma uh, Madam Speaker, of uh, identifying land for the establishment of the proposed Bunyoro Public University, we were dismayed to discover that this land was fraudulently transferred to another name in the names of Magali's Distillers, Uganda Limited, with a letter of no objection written by uh, one Mr. Mwanjere Medias on the 21st of August 2007 of the Ministry of Education and Sports, the Permanent Secretary. Madam Speaker, in his letter, he incorrectly indicated that His Excellency the President had recommended the investment by Magali's distiller. Yes. Right. Okay. Madam, Madam Speaker, you're giving an order on what? On who? Madam Speaker, uh -uh. You, a while ago you told us that on Thursday the Minister of Education is represented by the Honorable Ogwang. I said the Honorable Ogwang and the Honorable Muingo. And the Honorable Ogwang himself brought here a letter saying he is the one, the only one on Thursday who represents the first lady. Brought the letter to you? Is the Honorable Muingo in order? to appoint himself, yet the boss has already appointed the Honorable Gwanga to be here on Thursday. You know, I don't know whether, I don't know whether Honorable Semuju has become my secretary. To the best of my knowledge, that letter was not delivered to me. What I know, Dr. Muingo is here. Doctor. And they are all, all the ministers are here. Any of them is can answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, right Honorable Even speaker. the Minister of Finance has come. Uh, and speaker. I think the cost is only four billion shillings. It's only four billion. I beg your pardon, Madam The speaker. cost of the seeds is only four billion shillings. Four billion shillings. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, sir, ma madam. <laughs> Delivery three. <laughs> and the colleagues, the, this issue we discussed it last time. You remember? When uh, we were discussing about uh, payment for uh, coffee seedlings and, and, and tea seedlings, I think that issue came. I have discussed with the, the Commissioner General of Prisons because they produce seed and a good one at that. I am going to, now that you have rejuvenated me, I will go and uh, make arrangement. My only problem is you have to guide me how this seed will be distributed. Do I send them to the... Honorable, Honorable Minister. Yes, Madam. We always know the guidelines are there. All you need to do is to provide to the members. Procurement, you give... They always write to the members, come and pick seed, seeds to, for your constituency, but they go through NADS. Okay. Yes. Mama, I will give you the, 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 the full facts uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I know. I know. Today we are going on recess. Am I right? 
I will deal with you, Madam Speaker. Then you will communicate to the members of Parliament. Honourable members, I will communicate to you where to pick the seeds from. <laughs> Honourable Ariko Haba. From Electricity Regulatory Authority. And the process involves including advertising in the papers. Now, in addition to what the Honorable Herbert Ariko is saying, even in areas where they are supplying electricity, people can no longer afford it. Businesses are closing down. So, to strengthen the point raised by my, 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 my colleague and son, the Honorable Ariko, it must be a deeper inquiry. Because I understand, yes, he's my son, uh, seven years after our report, the president himself came out and said, we ought to terminate. But to date, they are still running, and the Ugandans cannot afford the electricity. Well, honorable 